we have got a new large language model for Persian language and it comes from one of our subscribers. So I'm very happy to present this new model called Maral. Maral is a Persian name of red deer. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. If it is wrong, please let me know in the comment section. So Maral is a language model, a large language model that is based on Mistral. So they've taken Mistral language model and then they have uh, fine tuned it on Alpaca Persian data set. So the data set that they use something you can find it here. So somebody has translated the Alpaca English data set into Alpaca Persian data set and that data set has been used to fine tune Mistral which ultimately led to Maral. So because of this Maral can answer both in Persian and in English and I'm going to do certain amount of tests for you to see what does this model do well? What does this model not do well? But once again, like I said, this comes from one of our subscribers. So I'm really happy to bring this to you all because it's always good to see that uh, the community that you are building actually ends up thriving on what you are teaching. So I'm really happy and proud of this model in itself. The model follows the Guanaco format. So where you have got the hash 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 human, uh, the prompt and hash 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 assistant on the answer. So you can basically give the prompt like this, um, the prompt and uh, the prompt format can look like this. The, in addition to the model in itself, they're also providing you the PEFT, um, the adapter in itself. So if you want to use the adapter, you can go ahead and then use the adapter. So if you go click here files, you can just see the adapter. This is extremely helpful when you have got the large model already, the base model, and you can just use the adapter and then use it instead of using the full model in itself again. Like in a resource uh, uh, compute, a uh, uh, smaller compute place, I think that is quite helpful for you to do it. So other than this, uh, the model is uh, very straightforward for you to use. I've put together a Google Colab notebook for us to test it out. And you can also load this model uh, with uh, bits and bytes uh, in 8-bit quantization. And uh, using Accelerate, you can distribute the model weights to CPU and GPU and it can perform better on, uh, let's say, low resource compute like Google Colab notebook with a limited amount of GPU RAM. There are certain things that this model does not do good. I'm, I found it out using my test as well, but also you can see from the model card in itself that this model, even though it can do Persian really good, but it is uh, it, it is known for a hallucination. And um, that will probably be better if they use some kind of alignment technique like DPO. And then there are certain things that you can see about the, in the end of token and all these things. Anyways, uh, thanks to the authors um, in this uh, particular case, Muhammad Reza and Mahi. Um, for creating this model and then uh, sharing it. I'm always a big fan of any model that is non-English and uh, yeah, this model comes with MIT license. Now to test the model, it is uh, very simple and straightforward. Install transformers, accelerate bits and bytes. Transformer is where uh, we're going to use the model, uh, download the model from Hugging Face Modeler. Accelerate is how we are going to distribute the model into GPU, multiple GPUs, CPU so that we can do the memory management. And uh, the good thing is this model comes as a sharded model. So it has got eight pieces that is less than two GB. So it makes it easier for you to handle like even a seven billion parameter model on Google Colab Notebook, the free Google Colab Notebook. Next, we are using bits and bytes primarily for the quant loading the quantized model. Once you have uh, installed all these three libraries, I'm running it on my T4 machine from free Google Colab. The next thing you need to do is you need to specify the model name. In this particular case, we are using Marl 7 billion alpha one model, but they've also released Marl 3 billion parameter model. So you can see the 3 billion parameter model, but right now I'm using the 7 billion parameter model. Once that is done, you can load the model and then you can load the to tokenizer. And while loading the model, I'm loading it with 8-bit true and also low CPU memory usage true. And device map is equal to auto so that Accelerate can distribute the model weights across CPU and GPU. Once that is done, we have to specify the prompt. So the prompt is in Persian. Uh, let me copy the Persian prompt so that you can basically understand what is going on here. Let me go here and paste it. Okay, so it says who was the president of United States in 1996. So that is the prompt that we have given. And uh, now once the prompt is created, we format it in the prompt template, like the Guanaco prompt template. Once that is done, we're going to take the entire prompt, tokenize it, send it to CUDA, the GPU. And then we have the generation configuration, like very basic ones, like for example, temperature less than one for you to have factually more correct answers. And um, then you have this end token, EOS, end of sentence token. And then you have got the maximum number of new tokens. And then you're going to generate using the model and then decode it and then display it. So this was the answer on the human has asked the question, who was the president of the United States in 1996? And let's see what the assistant answered. So copy the answer, come back here, paste it. 
says in 1996 the president of the united states was bill clinton and uh, we have more text come back here and paste it let's see what does it say bill clinton was the second elected elected second president of united states he was elected the second and last president in 1993 and in 1996 he was elected the second and last president as you can see that the model seems to be getting a little repetitive that is also primarily because we have set 300 tokens as max new tokens and the model when it does not have content as much as 300 tokens it starts filling in with these kind of like gibberish text that might create a problem and that's where like you know having like a good alignment technique like dpu would, would come into picture and then make the model better the next thing is uh, i wanted to test this model um, with uh, some random question um, that is not part of the example so one thing that you need to understand is even though these models are fine tuned model of uh, mistral that these fine tuned data set has a huge influence on how well this model can do and uh, i'm actually working on a separate video about whether these llms are basically like overfitting models and uh, based on that i'm doing a bunch of research and one of the thing that i have come um, across or i've like started believing is that these models are extremely good memory retrieval engines they can go back to their memory and then retrieve what you gave but maybe not as good as in generalizing whatever we thought about okay so now if this model is a base mistral 7 million parameter model and if it has been fine tuned on alpaca persian data set so maybe the alpaca data set has a huge influence on what this model can answer good what this model cannot answer good so i wanted to go out of distribution ood and then ask the model some question which could be part of the english data set but still i wanted to see how good it can give the answer in persian so for that i created a question and uh, the question is let me go here and then paste the question for you and the question is who is elon musk it's a very simple question and you expect the model to answer correctly but it does not so i um, went with max new tokens 150 and i got the answer here and when i paste the answer here you can see elon musk is an american actor who was born in 1990 so as you can see already the model has started hallucinating or it started giving you factually incorrect response and this could stem from a bunch of reason one the persian fine tuned data set might not have had enough details about elon musk for it to answer correctly the second thing is also the temperature that we have set here could play a role so what we can do is i can like reduce the temperature to zero and then try out the same answer okay it has to be floating point i'm sorry so let me set point 1 and then try out the same thing and uh, you can see the model is started generating but i hope you understood what problem i'm trying to uh, explain and to be really honest like uh, to give due credit to the authors of this paper or uh, the model they have already highlighted this as a problem in one of the known problems that the model is capable of uh, producing hallucination and it's not just a problem with this model in itself and that is exactly what the problem largely about large language models that these models even though they are really good at uh, explaining certain things because it's part of their memory they become very bad when it is beyond their memory and that is what we call as out of distribution ood so what this model cannot do unlike a human being could do is it cannot like take elon musk as an as a persian word and then connected to the elon musk in english word and give you the right answer and even with point 1 as temperature i think this model is still giving you the same answer elon musk is an american actor who was born in 1990 so the temperature did not have much effect so you can see that this is a big training data problem and that is also the i think the biggest problem that you are facing in uh, large language models so because this is a mistral model uh, so what we can do is i can actually go ahead and then give the same thing in english so let's uh, try and i hope this would give a right answer who is elon musk who is elon musk and when i ask this question now ideally i expect the model to give me an answer in english so the good thing this model can do is when you prompt it in a persian it knows that it has to respond back in persian and when you prompt it in english it knows that it has to respond back in english so this model is really good at that particular distinction between the persian and english prompting based on the prompting and it also knows how to respond back irrespective of whether you explicitly tell it to respond back in persian or english so that way this model is good but like i said uh, the factuality comes into picture because of the limited fine tuning data and also this goes into a broader question about how the fine tuning actually imbibes new knowledge into the model in itself but either way i think one of the easiest ways to start expanding a model into a uh, local language is uh, by do doing this fine tuning and once you have the versatility of uh, the large amount of data 
then you can actually ex uh, expand the knowledge of the large language model just by fine tuning and then later on once you have the enough computing resource and all those things you can explore methods like continuous pre training rather than doing a fine tuning you take the large language model and then you do continuous fine tuning and uh, with english as you can see of course it has given you the right answer so it says elon musk is a south african born american entrepreneur and business magnate who has founded and led successful companies uh, including tesla spacex the boring company is known for his innovative ideas and all these other things once again like it repeats primarily because of the reason i said where um, it does not have a proper um, um, like it tries to fill in as much as you have given the max new tokens but otherwise this model has very correctly answered the same question in english while it cannot generalize it with persian but i'm not saying that this model cannot answer persian this model can definitely answer persian but i have a feeling that that might be limited to the fine tuning data that it has seen and maybe a little bit of generalization beyond the fine tuning but not with entire corpus of whatever mistral has been trained on so that's something that we still need to test but nevertheless i think this is a great effort uh, the great effort is in first of all um, as the authors have rightly uh, thanked they have uh, thanked the mistral team first of all mistral 7 billion parameter is a very 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 solid base model i know a lot of people still use llama 2 to fine tune it for local languages i think we should just move away from llama 2 and then start using mistral for local languages one the second one is somebody has actually taken the effort of uh, translating the alpaca dataset into the persian dataset and uh, finally um, i think um, that that is where all the effort should go in like producing high quality training dataset and i've seen like this uh, organization has also shared their own dataset that they have used and the persian dataset is available for people to use so overall i really strongly appreciate the effort and once again like because it comes from one of our subscribers like i'm personally very happy to see this model and spread the word so if you are also making one of the models for your local language i'm always happy to spread the word on the channel see you in another video happy prompting